This is the Clark Water Scout, developed by C.A. Clark of Springfield, Missouri in the 1930s, and it might just be the truest running crankbait ever produced. While this body style has long been familiar to me, I had no idea just how much I didn't know about the Clark Water Scout until I met lure collector and C.A. Clark expert Ray Johnson. Stick around to learn the history of the Clark Water Scout and why this discontinued crankbait deserves a comeback. Retro bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about bill dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray-Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40 year old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. Welcome to Retro Bassin. I was recently speaking with Gary Simpson of Gary's Tackle Box, and the conversation soon veered into lore collecting. I was happy to learn that Gary, like me, is more of a generalist when it comes to collecting antique fishing tackle and equipment. And being a generalist, I just love attending antique fishing tackle shows where collectors specialize not just in specific brands, but also specific models and even specific colors. While I had an old Strike King Spencer Scout lying around my tackle box, I didn't know much about the history of this bait until I met Ray Johnson while room trading at the NFLCC National Meeting in 2022. I could have listened to Ray talk about his passion for hours, which is why I was so excited to run into him again at the Savannah Southern Classic Tackle Show this past month. I definitely used that opportunity to get Ray's collection on camera and also talk to him about the history of the Clark Water Scout. Hope you enjoy. C.A. Clark uh, in Springfield, Missouri started it. He was an avid fisherman and he made the Clark Water Scout to fish with. And he made some more and kind of give them out to his buddies. And they were catching fish on them like nobody's business. So it, it just started growing. The first one he put out was called a no-eye. It's a, you know, a, <clears throat> a regular water scout, but no indention in the eye. And then the next one he put out to give it a little more character, he put he put a dent in it to make and called them dent eyes. And then he went from that later on, still had the dent, but he put a tack in it and they call those tack eyes. So all this started back in the uh, in the late thirties is when he started this. And the first the first one that he made to make the keel on the lure he took his wife's copper pie pan and cut it up to make the keels. And there are still a few of those in the collections that, uh, that people have. I don't have one, I wish I did. But, but uh, it's, got the, it's got the copper keel where he made it, the very first one. And he started making them, you know, he was making them in his garage. And uh, so late 30s and then uh, he sold the business out, I can't remember the exact date, but say mid-50s to another company, but he still had kind of a hand in, in it because he, made, he held him to making it the same lure that he was making. And they made them for a while, and then they sold out, and then uh, Spence bought, them, uh, bought the patent and started making the Water Scouts the Spence Water Scout. It's not an official Water Scout because it's not a Clark. And Strike King put them out, and, but the difference, all his uh, Water Scouts that Clark made were either made out of red cedar for a sinker or white cedar for a floater. And when Strike King started it, they made all theirs out of pine. So they're, they're, they're not the same, they're not the same. And then later on, then, uh, 
that Spence sold out and Cordell bought, picked it up and makes the plastic one. The water scouts are real expensive, uh, especially like the tack eyes, but now when you get into a no eye, uh, you're talking about that because no eyes are rare. And uh, not a lot, whole lot of them out there. Uh, most what's out there is in collections, and so you're talking about uh, two fifty, three hundred dollar lure, or depending if it was a special order color. I have a blue one that's on my cards, picture of it. It's special order, only two of them known, and and it's it, it's worth about a thousand bucks. So they have twenty different versions. A lot of people don't realize that. And you can put together a super collection because there's, you know, the den eye, the, the, the no eye, the tack eye, and then you've got the jointed duck bill, the duck bill, the duck wing, uh, streamliner, you got that. You got the plastic jointed duck bill. Um, you got a goofy gus. You got a baby goofy gus. But the baby goofy gus, they're really rare too. They're only made, he only made six of them. And there's four known, and I'm lucky enough to have one. The keel is the, is the thing. There's not hardly very few lures that have it, something like a keel on it. Not, none of them that I know have the keel that looks like and the, the, the shark fin on the bottom. There's some, uh, there's one back there that's a sap, uh, Shakespeare, you know, it's got a metal <coughs> keel on the bottom, but it's it's that unique shape of the keel. And the way the belly band comes around and it's and then the lip is formed into the, into the belly band. The truest running bait you ever throw. It just runs so true. It gives it the vibration. Of it. Uh, you ain't got to adjust them. They're all in the same. You ain't got to bend, bend the nose tie to make it run right. Run straight. See, that one is round and kind of call that a halo eye. And then some of them didn't have any color. And then this one is called a slant eye. That That's actually a slant cut in, that they cut into. So there's you know a few different different variations in that. D these are all den eyes here. These are what they call the tack eyes. That's actually a tack. That is is one of the few that I have. Uh, I, that's not my collection. Uh, that is called a duckling. And to make that lure, they took the front end of this lure. And that's what makes the hardware on that, and it comes out the back. Now, on a regular duck bill, it's the same. It's just a bigger lure, but you see, it's got the regular keel and the belly band that comes all the way on it. These are called Little Eddies. These were named after his son Ed that helped him make lures, and that's that's a smaller version of it. That is called, that's a tenite type lure. It's called a streamliner. It is plat, it, it's made out of tenite. And a lot of them's transparent. Some of them's painted all the way. And then also these uh, jointed duck bills are made out of tenite, same stuff. Yes, you got different boxes from different years. And uh, I can't tell you exactly which year, which one was made. Uh, this box was made after Mr. Clark sold out, uh, sold his company, uh, and this co he made them change the name. And he, but uh, these were made after that, and and it has C. A. Clark and Company, and there'll be some that'll say C. A. Clark and Son on them, uh, which I don't have an example of that with me. And then this is a what they call a plastic clamshell box. Uh, they put them out in that and they would put the paperwork out and stamp it on the back. That, that, that was toward the end. All the numbers on the end, uh, you go by your color chart. Now that's, so that's a 314, and that would tell you that, that it goes with this lure, that color, and it, that, mean, that three means it is a floater, and if that was a four, it would be a sinker, and it would have uh, a red dot on the tail 
and that tells you it's a cycle. And I don't know if that one doesn't have it. I know this one's got it. See that red dot? That's a sinker. That, that, that distinguishes between the sinker. So that keel isn't about, because I initially was thinking it was some sort of weed guard or some sort of bumper for, it's basically to help steer that bait, keep yes, it running true. Yes, it makes it, that, that's what helps it run. But with the mouth, and, and that keeps it running true. Um, on the older belly bands, like on that, on this lure here, uh, it has an extra hole drilled in those where you can move that keel forward or backwards. I had moved uh, to Missouri from Columbia, Tennessee. That's where I was born and raised. And, and uh, I moved there. And when I started collecting, that was a Missouri made lure. And I said, I'm going to collect something from Missouri. Ron McEwen, he has a huge collection. And uh, Donnie Moore, he has a huge collection. And those are two guys that I really know pretty well. And, and they have, of course, I've got stuff that they don't have, and they've got stuff that I don't have as far as color-wise go. Because uh, I was told by uh, the guy I had in Springfield, who know Clark personally, and uh, the family and stuff, he collected water scouts. And he had one, he had a huge collection. And he told me, he said, Grace, I don't care how long you collect water scouts, you'll never get every color that they produce because he made so many special order colors. If he wanted a dozen made, he'd make you a dozen, paint them any color you wanted. So, so you, you'll never get every color he said that they made. I'm not savvy enough to, 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 to make a Facebook page for the water scouts. And to my knowledge, there's not one uh, but uh, but yeah they can contact me and and I you know I can talk water scouts to them and uh, you know send them some information on them uh, and that sort of thing and, you know kind of a little bit of history and stuff like that. If you'd like to learn more about the Clark Water Scout or even purchase a little piece of old school gold I will drop all of Ray's contact information down below in the video description. Ray also tells me he's going to be attending the NFLCC Tackle Show in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee this coming January. So if you happen to be there, definitely stop by and say hello. And if you're looking for some more old school content, click right here. Otherwise, I'll see you right back here. Same time, same place. Until then, keep the carpet side up and definitely fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bastard.